Hello, and welcome. Gotta check out the light. Make sure it's somewhat right. <laughs> Hello and welcome. This is James Blanchard, Cisneros, at your service. Thank you for joining me today. Today I will be reading the March 9th Facebook post. Yes, you have a lot of patience with me. March 9th Facebook post and making a few comments in it. And I trust it will assist both of us on our journeys. Here we go. How and why the ego tries to hide your inheritance. Love, peace of mind, compassion, forgiveness, and joy are your inheritance. But you must first accept your inheritance in order for it to be fully experienced. We are all one. Thus, to fully experience and accept your inheritance means that you're willing to offer and share it with all others. The more you withhold your inheritance from others, the more you will realize that you are not fully experiencing or enjoying it. Be vigilant, for the ego will use any excuse to judge your sisters and brothers as guilty and thus not worthy of their inheritance. But what the ego hides from you is that when it convinces you of their guilt, it is also unconsciously convincing you of yours. If it convinces you of your guilt, you will feel unconsciously unworthy of accepting or experiencing your inheritance. The ego knows that if you unconsciously feel unworthy of experiencing and expressing your truth, you will turn back to it for support. And that is where the ego wants you in service to itself. What is our inheritance? Our inheritance is the love that created us. Love is our inheritance. What does our inheritance feel like? There are many expressions to love, such as kindness, joy, peace, peace of mind, forgiveness, compassion, passion, etc., etc. Those are all expressions of love. Those are all expressions of our inheritance. Why does the ego want us to not experience our inheritance? or hide our inheritance. Why does it do that? Very simply because when it hides the fact from you that you are love, when it convinces you and programs into you that you're something other than love, then unconsciously within you, you believe, we believe, that it, how can we be a part of God if we are something other than God? if we're something other than love. So if we're using the ego's tools like judgment, resentment, anger, jealousy, etc., hatred, all we're doing is convincing ourselves that we are not love, unconsciously as that may be. And therefore, when we are unconsciously convincing ourselves that we are not what God is, then we look towards the ego for help and assistance because we're, if we're apart from God then we need some sort of defense against this world and the ego has programmed into us that the only person or thing that can defend us is our ego and so we go ahead and build up this thought system this ego's thought system we all do this individually through our family friends peers society a uh, combination of all that and we create our own little thought system, the ego's thought system, and we defend it because if we feel as we're being attacked, then we must defend this thought system to keep us safe. Because God is not keeping us safe because we're not really a part of God, according to the ego. And so what are the ego's main tools to separate us, to hide our inheritance? Its main fuel source for the judge, for the ego is judgment. And so 
the ego uses judgment as its main fuel. And it tries to tell us that, hey, we can judge our brothers and sisters because we are separate from each other. It uses this, the body, to try and convince us that we're separate from each other. And so it tells us that we can judge them without that judgment affecting us. And so in truth, we are all one. We are all love. But if the ego can convince us that we're not all one, that we're separate from each other, then the ego can use its tools, anger, resentment, through judgment, anger, resentment, jealousy, revenge, hatred, to convince us that we are not all one, that we are separate, and that we can't use all those things, the ego's tools, to attack our brothers and sisters, protect our thought system, the ego's thought system, defend it, and thus we are safe, according to the ego. But little by little, the more we use these ego tools, the more we see that when we attack a brother or sister, when we judge them, it affects us. And why is that? Because we're all one. And so what we do to our brothers, we have to feel that first. It's a thought within the mind, a feeling within the heart, before it gets manifested out into the world, before it gets projected out into the world, before it gets projected on, out into our brothers and sisters. And so what the ego is trying to do there is unconsciously teach us, program into us, that we are separate from our brothers and sisters. Thus, if we're separate from our brothers and sisters, we must be separate from God. If we can use judgment, anger, resentment, jealousy, hatred, and God is only love, and deep down inside we know that God is only love, then, forgive me, I, I try to get this light right. Uh, but different times of the day, different lighting. <laughs> anyway, I have no need to judge myself. Thank you. <laughs> and so, if we are using the ego's tools and we're separating ourselves from our brothers and sisters, then if we think that we ourselves unconsciously are anger, judgment, resentment, hatred, etc., and we know deep down inside that God is just love, then we cannot be a part or connected to God's source. Because God is love and we are all this stuff. And so we, when we use all this stuff, all these tools from the ego, we're unconsciously programming into us that we're not worthy of being connected to God, to source. But the truth is that we are always connected to God's source. And so when the ego uses a tool of judgment to fuel all its little games that it plays to separate us from our brothers and sisters and from, and from the source, which it cannot do in reality, but in the world of illusionary world of duality, it can seem that we're separate. And that's what the ego tries to do because then we go back to the ego's thought system to protect it and to defend ourselves against all these attacks and us attacking everybody else. And so when we defend the ego's thought system, the ego's thought system gets to live. And so the more we use it, the more the ego lives. If we start to see our connection with our brothers and sisters, if we start to use only love, then what use do we have for the ego and its tools? Nothing. And so little by little, little the ego dissolves into the nothingness from which it came because it itself is an illusion. It is not real. It's just that we have been programmed since birth to believe that we're something that we're not. And so there's areas within our life that we are somewhat connected to source, and there's areas within our life that we think we're not connected to source. And so the idea is to start remembering our inheritance, that we're always connected to, to source, that God is love and only love. And there is no opposite to all. There is no opposite to love. Judgment is just an illusion because the opposite of love and all is not judgment or fear or hatred or anger. The opposite of love of all of God is nothing. It's an illusion. So you can paint the solution as many, as many ways as you want, as many ways as the ego wants, but it's just that, an illusion. It's not real. And so today, let us simply start to think about this. Okay. Every time I, I use love, I mean, pay attention to when we're using love and feel a connection, and when we're using love's expressions, such as kindness, compassion, generosity, peace, joy. When we're using those expressions of love, we feel a connection to source. And so when we offer that to our brothers and sisters, because we are all one, we feel that ourselves. And so the more we use our inheritance 
the love that we truly are, the more we feel connected to source, the less we need the ego. And the more we do this, the less we need this, the less we need the ego, and little by little the ego starts to dissolve. And so if we start to use this more and more, we need this less and less. Little by little we see how unreal the ego is, how unreal the ego's tools are. They're not real. Illusions. And the more we use our true source, the more we express our true source with our brothers and sisters, the more we realize that this is so. That we are indeed worthy of our inheritance. Because every time we're using love and its expressions, kindness, generosity, compassion, joy, peace with our brothers and sisters, because we are all one, we're experiencing this love. When we're, when we're offering compassion to our brothers and sisters, because we're all one, we're experiencing this compassion within us. Because it has to flow through our hearts and minds first before it, it goes to our brothers and sisters. And so whatever we do to them, we are doing to ourselves. When we're offering love, compassion, joy, forgiveness to them, we are offering that to ourselves. We are, we are reprogramming our minds and hearts to remember that we are worthy of God, that we are worthy of love. And that's what our brothers and sisters are offering us. The opportunity to remember that we are worthy of love, that we are worthy of peace. We are worthy of God's love. Because love is our inheritance. God gave it to us. When we share this inheritance with our brothers and sisters, we start to see this oneness and how really we are worthy of this inheritance. When we block this inheritance from others, when we offer the ego's tools instead, we start unconsciously telling ourselves that we are not worthy of our inheritance. And so that's how, what, how why the ego hides it. It hides the fact that we're worthy of our inheritance simply to defend its thought system. Because it, the ego, wants to survive. And so let us not judge ourselves for playing the ego's little games. Because the ego itself is self-destructive. The more we use it, the more we see how useless it really is. So today let us not judge ourselves. Let us not judge our brothers and sisters. And when we do, no big deal. We're learning. Each of one of our journeys is sacred. But simply slow down time a little bit. And forgive me, sometimes I look over here just to make sure the light is right. <laughs> slow down time. Someday I'll be a great producer of these videos. <laughs> but right now it's perfect for you and me. So I will not use self-judgment. So today let us not use self-judgment. Let us not use judgment of others. But when we do, hey, that's fine. Let's not, let's not judge ourselves for judging others. Our journey is sacred and perfect. It's exactly what it needs to be to help us light those darkened areas within our minds where we have forgotten who we truly are. And so when we start to light this, the areas within our minds that we have forgotten that we are worthy of our inheritance. Thanks to our brothers and sisters for helping us do this. Instead of judging them, we start to offer gratitude to them because they're helping us remember who in truth we are by lighting these dark areas within our minds. These illusionary dark areas within our minds where we still believe the ego's thought system is more real than God. The ego's thought system is just a little game. It's a little game we've played for a little while. We, we don't need it anymore. And if we use it, that's fine. It's just part of our process to remember who in truth we are. And so once we remember who in truth we are, we can shine a light. Where we once, because we once held these dark areas within our minds, and because we now know these dark areas are not real, because we're all one, many people believe in, in these dark areas as real, so let's call it anger. Let's call it dark area anger. When we believe anger is real, but little by little, our brothers and sisters help us realize that it's not real, that only love is real, that only our inheritance is real. Then we shine a light on this on this anger, and this anger, the ego's little game of anger, begins to be reduced during our days. And we start to align more with God, with the essence of love. And so now we become examples to our brothers and sisters that love is really more, more valuable to us than anger. And because they, they, they and us are one, they desire what we have. They desire the peace within their hearts and minds, the love. They desire their inheritance because our inheritance and their inheritance are one. It's love. 
So they desire the love that we are showing now because we're lighting the dark areas within our mind where anger once lived, when the illusion of anger once lived. So now we become an example to them that love is more real than anger, that anger is only as real as you make it, as we make it. And so that anger now becomes an example of the light. So now you shine the light on that anger for others to see, for others who are playing around with the game of anger. And that is part of our mission here in life. Whatever darkened areas within our minds, which we still value more it's than... It's o'clock. Thank you. Where we still value the ego's games over God's love, over our inheritance, that's what we've come here to heal and to help others heal. And it's because we went through that illusion that we're now becoming this light within the illusion, the light at the end of the t tunnel of, the, of anger. To all those who are dealing with anger who want to let it go, because somewhere deep inside, they know they are not anger. No matter what the ego has programmed into them, they are not anger, and they know it. Deep down inside, they know it. And when you shine the light of peace instead of anger, when you shine the light of forgiveness instead of judgment, I shouldn't point when I'm saying judgment. <laughs> when you shine the light of love instead of judgment, the ego's game of judgment, you become a great light for them. And so you see, you start to look at your past differently also. You start to forgive your past because you see that you, your past was simply helping you realize who you truly are. Your past was simply helping you accept your inheritance. And when you accept your inheritance, you shine that light bright for those who are still hiding from their inheritance through the ego's thought system. And so the past becomes a gift. Everything that happened to you in the past becomes a gift when you realize this, that you're using the past to remember who in truth you are. Everyone in the past becomes a gift because you're, they helped you remember who in truth you are. You are love. That is your inheritance. God has gifted it to you in your creation. God is love. And he thought, he, she, it, source, thought. And created you. Love creates love. Love can only create love. Love cannot create illusions. You are love. You are perfect love. You are perfect peace. You are perfect joy. You are passion and compassion and kindness and generosity. That's your truth. Practice accepting your truth. Practice reminding yourself that you are worthy of your truth. And so when we're in playing the eagle's games of judgment, resentment, anger, jealousy, what have you, take it as a practice time. Stop yourself, say, oh, okay, currently I'm using this little thing, little uh, tool, eagle game tools. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to remember that I'm worthy of peace, that I'm worthy of forgiveness, that I'm worthy of joy, that I'm worthy of compassion, of kindness. And thank those ego tools for reminding you who in truth you are. And then you start to offer gratitude to your brothers and sisters from the past, to your brothers and sisters from the present, to you. You start judging yourself less, and you start accepting your inheritance, the love that in truth you are. You are as God created you. You're perfect, awake, and whole right now. That's the truth within you, within me, within all. This is who you are. This is who you have always been, and this is who you will always be. Love. This is your inheritance. Use it to remember that you are worthy of it. Thank your brothers and sisters for helping you use it and helping you remember that you are worthy of it. Thank you very much for your time, for my little lighting issues. I love you very much. I hope you all know that. Love you very much deeply. You're the reason I do these videos, really. And for those who made it all through through the video, thank you very much. I love you, and I love those who made it through two minutes of it. <laughs> Maybe someday make it through three minutes. 
Um, if you'd like to leave me a comment or a question, I would be del delighted to try and offer a response. If you can give the YouTube video a thumbs up in the YouTube channel, it helps with the listing process and it might help somebody find this video someday. And if you can please subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Google Plus channel, my <laughs> Twitter, or my Facebook. Uh, I would love to have you in those communities. Thank you very much. I love you very much. And God willing, we'll see each other tomorrow. Peace.